This guy writes a comment. He said, I've started watching you here recently and whatever video this was under uh, sums up his current situation. He said, it completely changed how I approach dating. We met, we went on a date. The date went great. I made plans for a second date. She drove two hours for the second date. It went great again. Now she's driving another two hours on Sunday to stay at my place and we're going to a movie on Monday night. For what, I'll, I'll say this, that, that's kudos, but this sounds like it's very, very long distance. I've been in relationships where you do that hour and a half to two hour drive. Yeah, I hope you got a lot of gas money is all I'm going to say, because um, it can work out, but you've got to have a lot of gas money in advance. At least she's coming to you. Like the fact that you're going to her and she's coming to you, that's a very good sign that she's willing to put in her half. So that I give her props for that. All right. Uh, that said, the whole like you've gone on two dates and now she's coming over Sunday to stay at your place and do a Monday movie night. Like that's that's a lot to do in the beginning. So just be careful of like if you're doing this kind of date, you might want to wait like another week before you ask her on another date. because This is a, a lot to do in the beginning. But anyway, so he says it gets hard at times wanting to talk or wanting to just have that sense of security. But she comes to me. She'll send a text. Hey, can't wait to see you soon, etc. My question to all of this is. How do you combat the anxiety of actually liking this girl and wanting more from this girl, but not breaking the tendencies you've established that have created a space where you found success? I love this question. So basically saying like, he's, he's used to being that guy that's texting all the time, or he's wanting her to text him. So he has a sense of security that he's still keeping her interest and that she still likes him enough. Right. And so, there's an in-between here where I, it's like what I call the transitional phase where it's like, as a guy, you're learning these new things, right? Oh, you're welcome in the chat. Um, so um, it, so when you're transitioning from, from doing old stuff that you were doing that wasn't working to trying new stuff, you're going to find there's going to be a situation where you're trying this new stuff and you're, you're seeing it actively work. You're seeing that you're not texting her a lot. And as a result, she's texting you more. You're getting hookups faster and it's great. But the problem is, these are new habits. You have years of bad habits that, for better or for worse, you feel comfortable doing. They weren't helping you, but you're comfortable in the motions of doing them. And so what happens is when you're doing these new habits, even if they're working a lot better, a part of you subconsciously is still wanting to go back to older habits because they work. That's why sometimes like you'll, you'll read my stuff or you'll read some other guru stuff and you find out that it actually works. And then as soon as it works, you go back to doing the old stuff that wasn't working because you have more of a history of doing the older stuff that wasn't getting you the good results, but it feels comfortable for you to do. And so the, the best advice I can give you is this, is that that is a normal part of the process. When you're doing new things, it's kind of like, I watched the video, uh, I was watching The Bachelorette and uh, this guy took this girl on a date to go sewing, which is not masking at all. But the point is, so, but in sewing, I realized, you know, you have pros there, they're just loop, 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 but in teaching her how to sew, it's like one loop at a time. Okay, we got that one. Now do this next loop over here, get this in there. And you continue to do that as a slow process until you get good at it and your hands get the motions down to where you know you're breaking out shortcut, you're doing this faster. And so you'll find that's what happens is that as you start to do the right stuff and get more good and good results and you keep practicing that more that your brain will shortcut to where these new things now feel like the things to do that also feel more comfortable than the older things and so the best advice i can give you is you just got to keep observing that when you're doing these new things that are actually working and that as you do them over time you have to trust that that'll become the new habit that not only feels good, but feels good in part because it actually works versus stuff you're doing before where it felt good, but you weren't getting the results that you wanted, right? And so, yeah, it's just, it's one of those things like, I can give all the advice in the world about, well, do this thing, blah, 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 but it boils down to also, as you habitually do it more and more, you'll be trusting of yourself that this process works and you'll become less anxious as a result. So it just takes time. Some, some, some of the stuff that I teach you guys, it's just gonna take time to feel as if it's comfortable for you to do. And you gotta just know that that time's coming. So just, if you see the thing that's working, working, keep doing that thing. And inevitably you'll be less anxious about it because you'll done it so much. Like me at 41, the things I'm telling you to do are things that I was practicing at 25 that I was nervous as heck about doing. But I've had enough evidence over time to see these things actually work, right? So hopefully, guy, this helps you out. I had a guy comment under my she's still legally married video. And that's a video I did where I talked about how she's, if a woman's still legally married, um, then ideally you're dating her, but you're not, well, not ideally. If you're dating a girl and you find out she's legally still married, then 
you ultimately don't want to try to make that a serious thing. Like until she starts getting paperwork signed and going through the ins and outs of actually breaking up with her husband, then you're not trying to have this be a real relationship. So anyway, this guy said, um, it's, uh, she might say that, but it's unlikely, especially if she's a narcissist like my ex-girlfriend. So his ex-girlfriend, she promised to get divorced in six to 12 months when we first got together, but never got divorced. The whole 3.5 years we were together. It was long distance, but now she's run off with her ex-boyfriend from 15 years ago and seems to be making moves to divorce. It's money motivated. This guy's the $600,000 condo in the West Loop of Chicago. Well, for one, woman's trash, so it is what it is. But more importantly, a few things here. For starters, you were with her for 3.5 years and she didn't get a divorce. So what that tells me is that you went into the situation trying to make this a relationship and trying to force her to do something. What I tell you guys on the show time and time again, you cannot force a woman to make decisions just because you want her to make them. So if this has been me in a situation, let's say I'm dating somebody and they're still legally married. For one, I would never agree to a relationship. I would just be like, at best, you know what? We're hookup buddies, we're friends of benefits, and I'm continuing to see other women that aren't married because I want to get with somebody that I know is not still married to somebody. And so at that point, she has a decision to make. She can decide her own accord if she's cool with you just, just being a hookup buddy and that is what it is. Or if she's like, but I really like this guy and I actually want to be in a real relationship with him, then she can file some paperwork. But in the meantime, you don't feel bad about seeing other women or about hooking up with other women because she's still in a marriage. Like until that paperwork is signed, you do not at all sign up for a relationship with a married woman. At the point that she says, hey, the paperwork's in uh, here in California, even with paperwork, you got to wait six months. But at least you can be like, hey, the paperwork's in. I got to wait six months before it's done. But the paperwork is definitely in. There's no fights on this other person's end or on my end. And so we're good. Then you can decide, OK, it's six months, but I'm willing to call it a relationship for now because at least paperwork's signed. I know it's, it's in the process. If it's not even processing, what are you even doing? So the fact that she went out with somebody else after all that, like, yeah, she's in her right to act like trash. But you can't be butthurt for, getting, for a decision that you made to get into a relationship with a married woman that was at no time trying to get rid of her ex. What this also tells me is that though, that you were trying to push the agenda, which means you were probably every every other week or so, hey, so you're gonna get divorced? Hey, so where are those papers? Hey, so what's going on? That makes you look weak. It puts her in their leadership position in the relationship, which most women don't want. And it makes you less appealing, less attractive, which is why you're now no longer with, with her. So. All this to say, this is a bad choice from the start. It's your fault for getting in the relationship. She was already trash, and you should be out there seeking other women if you want to cause other situations like this. So hopefully this helps you out. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop. Let's you are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high class man. You are high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class.